At Kroger, shopping with pickup and delivery is the same as shopping in-store. Same low prices, deals, and rewards on the same high-quality items. It's one small click for groceries, one big win for busy families everywhere. Start your cart today at Kroger.com. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Ready for a road trip, but gas prices are making you think no trip? Visit CircleKContest.com today to win free gas for a year from Circle K. Turn no trip into road trip at CircleKContest.com. See contest rules at CircleKContest.com. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to take because I am a seed. But every good Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another broadcast of When Christians Speak Talk Radio. We are broadcasting. Amen. We are broadcasting live. Amen. Uh, Live today. Amen. This is Friday Night Joy. I'm your host, Reverend Ray. Amen. We're going to continue on our our message we've been doing off and on like I'm on Friday night. And a, and a Sunday, so we're going to um, do part three today, and this is something that has been on my heart, amen, called My Obedience to Christ is My is my Healing, and the first one we did, but it's one of the ones we did was Breakthrough, and um, the other one was, if I turn to my notes real quick, amen, amen. Um, uh, it's my blessing, then it was my breakthrough, now it's my healing. And we're gonna talk about the uh the healing of being obedient, um uh, healing part of being obedient to God and how people can be healed just by being obedient. Um and uh, this is something that I mean all of us need, you know, where we need to examine ourselves, amen, and look closely and make sure we're following after the things in God's and not after the things of our flesh and uh, I'm laying before him, prostrate before him and just asking him for guidance. Amen. But before we really get into the broadcast, I, again, I want to welcome everybody that's listening. Amen. This is When Christians Speak Talk Radio. This is Friday Night Joy. I'm your host, Reverend Ray. Amen. Um, I want to remind you about History Bound and Broadcast. Minister Vanessa Williams is every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Declaring the French record, Reverend Pat Randall, this Thursday at 12 noon. Friday Night Joy, of course, that's tonight. Um, um, Reverend Ray is every Friday at 7 p.m. The Bread of Life, and then with with Reverend Ray is Sundays, the first and the fourth Sunday of the month. Amen. The first and the fourth Sunday of the month. Um, Talent to Change with Pastor Paul Morgan is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Our monthly broadcasts are as follows. Life Plan with Apostle Shirley Jones is every first Monday at 7 p.m. The Bold and the Beautiful with Reverend Nobita Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, and Minister Jordana Cunningham is every second Saturday at 10 a.m. Adoration with Evangelist Evangelist Lewis McElwain is every third Monday of the month, amen, at 7 p.m. Marriage Takeover of the Body of One, Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson is every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Hour three, Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk with Ray Rose, Alston Green, Cleophus Malone, Tyrone Rose, and Antonio Mitchell is every second Sunday at 7 p.m. M, amen. In fact, uh, this broadcast, this Sunday coming up, the men will be together and we'll have a guest coming on with us. us um, um, La Monica um, Williams will be with us. 
Uh, she's, she's a clinical psychotherapist, and uh, I believe that she's going back to how to get a get a, her uh, doctor degree, and she has her own company, her own business. So we'd be talking about talking to her about um, dealing with depression and suicide, and uh, just mental illness or mental breakdowns, and all those kind of things that comes up in our life. That's And, of course, don't forget about Midday Glory Prayer, Reverend Gwen Dixon. Amen. It's every Wednesday at 1 p.m. The dial-in number is 712-770-5506. That's as code as 732-499. You can listen to any of the broadcasts coming in on all the, the different platforms, I, I Heart Radio, Spotify, uh, iTunes, of course, Blog Talk Radio, Spreaker, just to name the two. I think we even on tune, tune in, amen, just to name a few. And, and of course, we have, they're always adding the broadcast on, onto different platforms. So we we are you're able to listen to us at any given time. I mean, no matter what part of the world you're in, amen. Uh, we have probably well over a thousand um, um, podcasts at this time that we've been doing this since 2013. So we've been doing it for a while, amen. And and uh, just a, a group of people, the men and women, uh, want to praise and worship God and give God all the glory, amen, amen, and amen. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and open up in the word of prayer. Father God, we come today first to say thank you. Thank you for your many blessings, God. Thank you for all that you are doing in our life, God. Thank you, God. We know, Lord Jesus, that you are in control of everything. We give this broadcast to you as we do always because it belongs to you, Lord Jesus. It doesn't even belong to us. Lord Jesus, we are just trying to be obedient in the calling that you have placed in our life to spread the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to let a world, darn world, know that that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, amen, and through him that they can be saved, to share, to to save someone's life, to to show them a more excellent way, God. That's what all we want to do here today, God. So we give this broadcast to you. I give myself to you, Lord Jesus, because truly it's nobody but you that can do it, not me, but it's truly you. So I submit myself to under the authority and under the hope, an anointing and the holiness of you, God, and say, come, Holy Spirit, come and have your way. You set that atmosphere. You speak the words that need to be spoken. God, you break up the ground that is followed, Lord Jesus. You, Lord Jesus, heal, deliver, restore, help, love on whatever is needed within the, the body of Christ, whatever is needed to those that are listening to this broadcast today, God. I pray that you will give it to them, that they will be blessed, that their life will be changed, God, that they will completely be converted, that they will be not do the same thing they did before, God, but seek after things to you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Come with all your might and your glory. and You set the atmosphere. But truly, there is none like you in all the earth. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Again, I want to welcome you to the broadcast. This is When Christmas Be Talk Radio. This is Friday Night Joy. I'm your host, Reverend Ray. My topic is my obedience to Christ is my healing. We have started on this part about, about almost three weeks ago, maybe a little longer, but this is part three. This one is talking about healing. So we can just jump right into the scriptures, man. I'm telling you, I was looking at this um, earlier today. Amen. I'm not going to go back over some things that I, I encourage you to go back and listen to the um, previous broadcast, uh, amen, and um, we're going to probably set it up on our website, this and some of the others, so that you can listen to it more on a regular, if there's a series being t- taught, rather than trying to hunt it on, hunt, um, hunt through it on Blog Talk or the other different platform, you can go directly to whencrescentspeed.com and listen to uh, the series like that. So pray for a brother to go. That's what we're trying to do. That's within the game plan. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, so when I, when I, again, when I looked at this, this scripture, scripture, we're talking about obedience and how important um, obedience is. I got two scriptures that we're going to talk about. Amen. The first one's coming out of Second Kings chapter 5, verses um, 10. Amen. And the uh, the other one is going to be coming out of um, John chapter 9, 
verses 1 through 7. Let me just turn in my Bible here. Um, let's see, where am I going? Let's go here first. Yeah, let's go to, um, can I got my pad open, but I want to have the all of the scriptures. Amen. I want to go to all of the scriptures. Uh oh, I did something wrong. Amen. Just bear with me, y'all. Here we go. Amen. Actually, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take my time with this, and I'm gonna start at verse one. And we got an hour, so we should have time to get to um, um, John chapter nine, verses one through seven. Amen. But let's go ahead and start re- reading this. It says. Second Kings chapter 5, um, verse 1, it says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had, had given deliverance unto Syria. He, he was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Talking about a man being a leper. Mm-mm-mm. And the and Syrians had gone out by comforters and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God and my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, Samaria for he will recover him of the leprosy. Okay. And one went in and told his Lord, saying thus, and thus said the maid that is in the land of Israel, that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to it and go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, of six thousand pieces of gold, ten changes of raiment. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mightst recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, I am my God to kill and to make alive that this man do sent unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a cord against me. And it was so when Elisha, Elisha, the man of, man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. And he said, Now he should know that there is a prophet in Israel. Verse 9 says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of, of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash and in Jordan seven times, and their flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Okay, now we get into some instructions. I remember last weekend the week we talked about instructions that God gives us instructions to do, and it's up to us to be obedient to those instructions. Okay, it says, let me read verse ten again. And let's just send a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Amen. And uh, verse 11 says, but Naaman was wroth and went away and said, behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of, of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Papha rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. In other words, he didn't follow the instructions that was given to him. He was not being obedient because his healing was in the being obedient. But he began to look up on himself and begin to look at the rivers of Damascus and thought that they were better than the waters of Israel. Why you got to come all the way here to Israel to wash in the waters of Israel? So, you know, he was questioning all of this and everything. But say but for me, okay? Okay, I say but for you too. All right, and it says, and his servants came near and spoke to him and said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, would thou, thou not have done it? 
how much rather than what he said to be washed and be clean. Yeah. In other words, look, if the guy if the prophet told you to do something that was greater, you know, you know, kill a thousand lions and everything or whatever, you know, you would have done it. But all he asked you to do, you know, is go wash and be clean. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the seven of the man his back came again like unto the of the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Now, this time, because somebody brought correction or brought into his attention and everything, he decided to obey God, okay? And when he obeyed God and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, the Bible says his flesh became clean as a little child, as a little child. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know, hallelujah, that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now, Thurfell, I pray thee, take a blessing, uh, take a blessing of that service. He, see, you know, a lot of times when we don't fail to realize, when we fail to realize that God wants to work a miracle in our life. And we can be our own stumbling block, you know, to to prevent or to 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for, or to make that which God has said to be true take a long time coming. And we don't want to be like that. We want to be in a place to, uh, in a place to, of obedience and abandon every word upon word, letter upon letter. You know that God has given us to do, because in this case, the, the in this case, His healing was in the His obedience. His healing was part of that whole obedience part. He had to obey the man of God. You know, if he didn't obey, he and if he didn't listen to the servant, he didn't listen to instructions. He would have went back home the same way he came to Israel. And that's not what God wants us to, to be. He wants us to be different. When he sends instructions and uh, when he wants to heal us, he wants us to be different, change inside out and outside in. He does not have a desire for anyone to, of, of us uh, to have a leper type of spirit or a leper type flesh, you know, that eats away at us to to a point that we are no good for him and we're no good for anybody. But what God did is he made a testament out of, out of a layman. Amen. He made he made a testament out of, out of layman, sorry. He made a testament out of him. You know, by using a prophet, by using the man of God and giving him instructions on what to do. Amen. And, and it says, and he returned to the man of God, he and all his company stood before him and said, behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of that. So he recognized that all the other gods he had come up against, I mean, he was a man of war, probably been all over the region fighting and looking at different gods, probably even had his own God himself that he looked at for a while. But he recognized who God was because the man told him, the man of, the man of God told him to go go wash. And finally, when he followed us, he was made clean. So that the, and again, I keep going back to that fact. The Bible says that his skin was like that of a child. <laughs> it's like a little child, you know, like a little baby, you know, you know, the smooth and everything, you know. Amen. It says, uh, verse sixteen says, but he said, as the Lord liveth, Elisha speaking, before whom I said I will receive none. And he urged him to take it. But he refused. And Naaman said, Shall thou not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, mules burden of earth for thy servant, where henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. See that? <laughs> he decided, he's like, I'm not giving sacrifice to any other god, but unto the Lord. This man was completely converted by his healing that was in his obedience. Okay, it says that in in this thing the Lord pardoned that servant that when my master goes into the house of Raymond to worship thee, and he leaned on 
leaneth on my hand. I bow myself in the house of Raymond. When I bow myself down in the house of Raymond, the Lord pardoned us in this thing. He said, go. He said to him, go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. Amen. Then the rest of us get into the servant. Amen. <laughs> and again, the servant, the servant, Gahiza. Amen. The servant of Elisha. Amen. And um, it's interesting because I wasn't going to read that part, but when I look at that part, amen, there was a disobedient part on him, too. You know, there was a disobedient part on him, too. And he ended up getting the very thing that Naaman had, amen, the, 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 the leprosy, because he was in disobedience. Because he decided to go and ask uh, um, Naaman um, to. Um, to uh, for some things, okay. He decided to go and ask Naaman for a talent that's timber and 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 two change of garments and everything. You know, uh, um, Elisha didn't tell him to do that. He did it on his own. He know what Elisha had told the man that he didn't want anything from him, but he decided on his own. So, so disobedience comes in in all his forms. In all, all forms. But he decided on his own. In fact, let me just read it here. This is verse 22. It says, And he said, All is well. My master hath sent me, lie right there, saying, Behold, even now there, there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophet. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garment. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He said, My master said, have sent me. And Naaman said, Be content. Take two talents. And and he urged him and bound two talents of silver and two bags with two chains of garments and laid and laid them upon two of his servants and they bare them before him. Check it out. Now he said, Give them my pray to go back to twenty two, he said, Give them my pray the a talent of silver and two changes of garment. Naaman, listening to him, gave him two talents, okay, uh, of silver and two in two bags with two changes of garment. Okay, the verse goes on saying, and when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed bestowed them in the house, and he let the men go and they departed. But when he but he went in and stood before his master, and Lisha said unto him, What's coming thou, Gehazi? And he said, That servant went no with him lie. Okay, disobedient and lying. <laughs> okay, and he said unto him, "Went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his church and beat thee? Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men slave men servants and man slavers, man maid servants?" And the leper said, therefore, Naaman said, cleave unto thee and to thy seed forever. He went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. He he knew what the instructions were, what was Elisha was to, to Naaman, and he should have followed that and left it alone. Okay. But he, this is a danger that we're time that we live in now because you see a lot of people that are, are prophets or leadership, they not all, but they do have a tendency to do things for the money and not for the ministry and not for the calling. Okay. And uh, basically that's what he did here. He, he was more into the things that this, the layman could provide, the comfort and not interested in just being obedient, you know, and to think about it, he didn't know truly um, the office of Alicia, what he was doing, he just overheard the converse, heard the conversation. I believe he knew the and heard of the conversation, and I believe that he didn't know that because he that he wasn't in that position to know. In other words, sometimes people and what I'm saying is sometimes people in leadership know a little bit more than what's going on <laughs> than you you do. Whether the Holy Spirit has uh, that revi- re- revealed it to them or given them a vision or dreams so that they might not you you might know a piece, but they know might they used to know a bigger picture. So we have to be careful on what we do with that because disobedience um, comes in all forms. Now, uh, where naming naming was um, obedience 
was his healing uh, here. The, uh, the servants um, disobedient was his curse. <laughs> the servants disobedient and not following the instructions because the instruction was plain. Nope, I don't want to take anything from you. <laughs> okay, the instruction was plain. But his disobedience was his curse. Amen. His disobedience was the curse. So it's important that we as believers, man, um, 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 be completely ob- obedient to the things of Christ, but not just not just that. Especially if we're trying to get a, a healing, you know, and everything. And I know some of us um, um, don't necessarily believe in taking medicine and going to the doctors. And I've heard people say that over the years, and you know. But I've learned one thing that God he- heals in different ways. Okay. He heals a different way. He don't heal. We can't put God in a box and say, oh, he's going to heal miraculously just by someone there, just only by their, their, their hands on it. Okay. Some people I know are here because they follow the instructions of a doctor and um, they no longer have to take blood pressure pills. Okay. Because they took them and it was obedient. They were regimented. They changed their diet. They did all those things necessary. They followed the instructions. So they never, never had to take any more blood pressure pills. You know, for example, my mother uh, was diabetic at one time to a point where she was taking insulin shots and all that. Okay. She followed the instructions. The doctor, she prayed. She did everything that she's supposed to do. She no longer suffered. Uh, as a diabetic, diabetic. in all my life, I've never heard of one that was diabetic becoming no that di- none that di- not a that di- not a diabetic at all. So there's a healing that took place that was um that was in their in her life. See what I'm saying? Her obedience to follow the instructions, her obedience to the the plan that was laid out. What's a part of a healing? Amen. I want to read, uh, let's see, where am I going? I'm going to John chapter 9 uh, and, and verse 1, starting at verse 1. And it says, John chapter 9, starting at verse 1. It says, and Jesus, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And the disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. And Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Okay? Let me, can I stop right there for a minute? You know, sometimes things come on to our life, and it's not because you have done anything wrong, but God wants to manifest himself in you. Okay? Just like Naaman was, uh, God manifested himself, and Naaman to Naaman decided that he was going to worship no other but God, but the God, Lord, Lord God of Israel. God wants to manifest himself in you so that you can be healed, but he gets the glory, and everybody else get a testimony about the goodness and the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. Verse 4 says, he's I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night coming when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay, verse 6 says says this. It says, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay up spittle and, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation, sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came sin. He said, he went his way, washed, and therefore came sin. Now, that's amazing, y'all. That's amazing right there. Now, the, the thing is, Jesus did the healing part, but the man still had to follow the instructions and go wash um, in the pool of Siloam. Okay, he had to go wash. What if he had decided that Jesus did all that so he didn't want to? He would have missed out on his healing. His again, his obedience was in his healing. It said he went his way therefore and washed and came singing. Can you imagine? He was a man, a man that had been blind since birth. He had never seen 
anything in his life since birth. Can you imagine the great joy that he had when he was able to see all because Jesus says, go and wash. Jesus did his part and everything, but there was a part that he had to do too. And that his part was a part of being obedient. Just being obedient. That's it. Him being obedient, he went his way, therefore, and washed and came clean. Came and came in. Then, then he complained at first and everything and said that he could have stayed home and, 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 and washed it in there. But this time, what he did, they, what David did, when he got chastised and when he got brought some, um, looked at it from a different different perspective because there was somebody in his life that was willing to speak to him at that time. You know, that's what took place. The name of the Bible says that he went and washed dips seven times. Seven times and came out clean. So clean, like the, the skin of a bit, the clean of a small, a little child. Obedience. You know, the other thing that I, I want to talk, talk about real quick, and um, we're going to go ahead and close out on that. But the other thing that you need to know and you need to understand here that what was going on in both cases, I mean, that, that, that there had to be people that was in his life. If the young lady or the servant wasn't in place, amen, to explain to 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 name it that, hey, look, if he had asked you to go kill, and I'm paraphrasing here, if he asked you to go kill a, a, some great feet, Feast, um, some great um, feat. Um, I guess I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying that right. Some great thing to do that you would have did it. If he had said go and kill a, a hundred foxes, you would have did it. You know, but because it was something simple and something small, and, and, you know, and, and, and probably something that he probably felt like, like this is nothing. You know, this this is not no nothing that would bring hoopla. To me and stuff like that, you know, like lights and thunder and and and, and lightning and all that kind of stuff coming in and saying, "No, just go wash," you know. God took something very basic and just told him to go wash. Go wash, you know. But God, the thing is that there are people that's in uh, your life and in, in my life, Amen. That are there to assist us, to direct us. To, to lead us to, to the, the obedience of what Christ. And we got to be aware of them and everything because <laughs> they're sent by God. The, in Naaman's case, he, the servant was there for him. If the servant had not been there for him, Naaman would have never got healed. And if, this, if Naaman had not listened to what the servant had said and decided to go ahead and do it anyway, he would have never got healed. He would have never got healed. He, if he wasn't, if he was the department to be disobedient about the thing. Or what if he had got the attitude, well, you're a servant, so you, can't, you don't know anything. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know anything. You can't really tell me what to do. You know what I mean? You know, what if that pride and that ego had kicked in and said the servant needs to stay in their lane or something like that? He would have missed out on his blessing. He would have missed out on his healing. So the task for us today means, y'all, that we cannot afford to miss out on our healings. We cannot afford to miss out on our breakthroughs. You know, we cannot afford at this time in our life to miss out on our blessings. So the prayer become God, prepare me in every way, in every way. Prepare us, God, in every way that we will follow after the statutes of you. That when you speak, we will, we will say, Lord, your servant here, here am I. Where would you have me to go? And just, just, just be obedient in it. You know, be obedient to the point that, that you have a zeal for it. You know, be that kind of be. And I, I'm, I'm speaking to everybody. I'm also speaking to myself. You know, sometimes we need to be able to preach or teach to ourselves. I'm like, self, listen, God's been so good to you. All you got to do is continue to be obedient in the things of him. And if God ain't in it, then you you step away from you, leave it alone. You know, but if God said, yes, go forth, you know, then we should go forth. You know, I think the thing I liked about, um, I think it was David, 
uh, there were times that he would ask us, should we go forth? And God would say, yeah, go forth. And he, he, he would say, should we go forth and get another time? God would say, no, not, no, no, go forth. Yeah. You know, that kind of obedience, man. That we don't do anything, anything, y'all, no matter how small it is or great, unless God has given us okay to do it. You know, unless God, you know, Bishop Jiggs, I, I shared this on Facebook online. I taught a message earlier, and I was listening, to, I ended up listening to it two or twice about uh, what if God says no? Let me see if I can, I want to misquote quote it, amen. But man, that, Methods, man, you know, um, really just completely blessed me. Let me see if I still have it. Yeah, I know I have it. I just got to turn to it real quick. Amen. 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 Here we go. Okay, his message was trusting God when he says no. <laughs> his message was trusting God when he says no. And he's coming from the 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 uh of Apostle Paul, amen, from heaven the um I think it's in Second Corinthians the heaven the uh the thorn in his flesh and he that buffeted him and he asked God three times, you know. <laughs> and God basically said to him, My grace is sufficient. You know, and there was a moment where God said no. And God said, No, I'm not gonna remove it. You know, I'm going to keep it in there because my grace is sufficient, you know. So, so his message was trusting God when God says no. You know, and and and, and that's part of the obedience. Okay, God, I'm asking you to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm at a place and I need your help anyway because I want to be obedient. But, okay, sometimes us being obedient is not in favor with our flesh. <laughs> It's not in favor of the play. It goes completely opposite what our intellect uh, or our flesh seem to want us to do or think, you know, because we are ourselves. We think we know a lot, you know, but it's, it's, I think what it is when it comes to a being obedient, you know, to the things that God, even when God says no to something, we say, okay, God, you got my will. Like we say, like Jesus said to God, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus was obedient to his to the Father. He was obedient to the Father because he knew that the Father knew best. We know that Jesus Christ in our life knows the Holy Spirit knows best. We know that God knows what's best for us. So our task is to hear my Lord. What would you have me to do? Send me, God. You know, and if there be anything in us, Lord Jesus, that be opposite of there be witchcraft or the disobedience or rebellion or any of those words like that, we pray that the Holy Spirit will completely remove them out of the way. Amen. Would pray with me. Father God, we thank you for this broadcast. We pray that it has been a blessing to someone, God. We thank you in advance, Lord Jesus. We pray, God, that you, Lord Jesus, God, you, Lord Jesus, will heal our body. Not to be said yes to you, and not to be follow your instructions, and did everything that we you said for us to do. God, we want to to be healed, Lord Jesus, healed in the mind, in the soul, in the body, Lord Jesus. We want to, Lord Jesus, be obedient to you. So help us, God. No matter where we are, we do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, y'all, I'm done. And don't forget, uh, this Sunday, man, I'm excited about um, 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 Prophet or Pastor, amen, and LaMonica Williams being with us to talk to the brothers about um, depression and um, not to end suicide and some of the other um, e- emotional um, distress that people get under, especially this time of year. Uh, amen. So, um, I do want to say, if you're listening to this broadcast and you're thinking about any of those things or to hurt yourself or hurt someone, please dial. First of all, call out to Jesus. All right, number one. All right, get around some. Call someone to to pray you through it. But also, don't be afraid to dial nine one one if it gets that bad. Dial nine one one. Don't do yourself in a harm, and don't hurt anyone else. Amen. So y'all have a blessed night. God bless you. Have a great weekend. And we'll talk to y'all Sunday. God bless you. Amen. Amen.